Hi everyone, today I am going to use my uh, ultimate probiotic yogurt maker to make the SIBO yogurt. Hi, I'm Anita. Welcome back to my channel where I show you how I lost 145 pounds following the animal-based ketogenic diet. Okay everybody, today I'm going to show you how I make the SIBO yogurt, the El Rotary yogurt, uh, in my new yogurt maker. About a week ago, I released a video where I made it in the sous vide, and I will link that video down below for those of you who have a sous vide and don't have this. But I wanna tell you all about this yogurt maker, uh, why I like it, pros and cons, that sort of thing. And uh, I'm going to also make today's yogurt from scratch uh, using the tablets that have the culture in them because the video I made last week uh, just used my previous yogurt batch as a starter. And a lot of you were asking, well, how do you do it when you are starting fresh? So we're gonna cover that today as well. Just a couple of things. I'm just gonna quickly go over what is in this yogurt. Um, I'm not going to go into all the reasons why I did. You know, I've started having a little bit of this every day. I covered that, I thought, pretty well in the last video. Um, so if you want to know all those reasons, I mean, basically, Dr. Davis has a book called Super Gut, and I had the book for a year and uh, finally read it and finally realized uh, out of, I think about 12 risk factors and you know whatnot, uh, I, I have nine and, and so there's a pretty good chance that, that I have uh, some bacterial overgrowth. SIBO stands for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. The yogurt has helped me intensely over the last couple of weeks. So, all of those details are in that last video, which is why I'm gonna link it below today. I'm just going to show you how to make it from scratch using the tablets and also uh, how to do it in the yogurt maker instead of in the sous vide. So uh, the first thing I need to do is to crush these tablets. I have made my, uh, my liquid base already. Uh, all I did was put a one liter container, which is very close to a quart, in a pot. I've heated it to 180, it was about 185-ish degrees, and now I'm just letting it cool down. So while it's cooling down, we're going, going to crush the tablets. Now, I when I crushed the tablets in my first batch, I just used a mortar and pestle. That works, and for those of you who don't have a mortar and pestle, I'm gonna try it this other way that I saw someone do in their video. And basically, I'm going to crush it with rolling pin. So we will just uh, poke these all out. So you can apparently also get, uh, instead of tablets, you can get little packets of yogurt starter for the El Raw Terry. Um, I didn't, there's none on Canadian Amazon, but on US Amazon apparently. And you can also get capsules that you can just break open and you've got the powder. So I'm not so lucky. Uh, I have to use what I can get and that is these tablets. I have put uh, some links below uh, for the Canadian version. For those of you Canadians who are watching me, um, it, and also, if you're in Western Canada, you can buy this at Shoppers Drug Mart. And I have also put the US links below for what uh, the equivalent brand to this in the US. So here we are. I don't really know if this is, you know, how this will do. If I can't get them all crushed to my liking, I'll, I'll dump the rest into the mortar and pestle. Okay, that seems pretty good. It's pretty powdery. I guess that works. And so does mortar and pestle. So whatever method you're able to use. And I suppose if you had a mallet, if you, you know, don't have a rolling pin and you had a mallet or something, that would probably work as well. I'm just gonna put it in this little container because my I had sterilized my all my stuff earlier and that is still a little wet inside. There's some drops down there. 
Now with these tablets, there is a sort of a fruity smell because they're chewable tablets. They're meant to, for people who have stomach troubles to chew them. Um, but there, that doesn't translate into the yogurt, uh, especially subsequent batches. Um, I fully expect this first uh, batch in my new yogurt maker, it might separate a bit. The first batches often do. Uh, so I'm going to take all the precautions I can, uh, and that includes heating up the milk and making sure the water level is up to the level in, in the jars. Those sorts of things do help it not to separate as much. So let's, uh, let's hope that that works. Um, but even so, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna dry this out. So for this first batch, we also need inulin powder, two tablespoons. And I'm just gonna test my temperature here. Okay, we're still waiting for it to come down. So I'll put these aside for the moment because I want to tell you about the yogurt maker. So uh, here's my new yogurt maker. It's called Ultimate Probiotic Yogurt Maker. And the reason I got it is because I found that because this takes 36 hours, I wanted to always have a batch going. And it's really hard to, uh, when, when I'm uh, using my sous vide, sometimes I wanna use the sous vide for something else. And also the uh, liner, the, my instant pot liner is what I hook my sous vide wand onto to make the yogurt. So I'm down two appliances, two of my favorite appliances, the sous vide and the instant pot are tied up for 36 hours. And then when it's done, um, I have to, you know, there's a day turnaround and, and then I have to start again to, so that the next batch is there. Because um, there's other people in the family that are also enjoying the yogurt with me. So I just need to always have a batch going. And, and so I decided I'm gonna get the yogurt maker. So one thing that's cool about the yogurt maker is it comes with these jars. They, these are little jars and this is great for portion control. So I'm going to try to uh, fill each jar to about just over 100 milliliters, which uh, it, it, that should be fine because I've, uh, a liter is 1,000 milliliters and we've got eight. So if I just go above, that'll be about a half a cup in each of these jars. And then while the jars are being like, uh, when they're in the fridge and people are consuming the yogurt, then I can have another batch going by using these containers. I, if any of you have these Pyrex type containers, I've got several. I have, I have a Star Wars themed one. I've got these ones with the circles. I have some plain ones. You can fit two of these side by side in this machine. So it is just perfect. Um, I have two in the fridge that are full of yogurt right now. So it's absolutely perfect. And um, the other thing you can have is uh, jelly jars in there that are about this size. You can put those in there. It doesn't have to be these jars. So you can always have this little machine going. So I'm just gonna put this aside and just quickly test this. Okay, we're getting there. So that's, that's pretty much all, uh, all that I have to tell you about it. Uh, so far, I've been very happy with it. One thing I would suggest though, is that you, when you first get it, uh, put some water in, turn it to 100. The El Rotary yogurt um, should be at about 100 degrees for 36 hours. So, so put the water in, turn it to 100 and, and then about an hour later, test the temperature and just see where it's at. And I found that it was a little, a little bit higher, like about 102. And that's fine, the, the El Rotary can go up to, I believe, 106. So you can either just leave it at that, not worry about it, or if you want, you could set it to 99 or, or you know, something like that. But it also could be that each individual yogurt maker might run just a little different. So it's a good idea to test it and just make sure you know exactly what temperature it runs at because the digital will say 100, but that may not necessarily be so. 
Um, so that's the only cautionary thing I have to share on it. Everything else it is super easy. It's super light. Like it's really light. It's, uh, it's, it weighs nothing and uh, it makes zero noise. So you can't even tell like, you know, when you walk into a kitchen and there's an appliance running, how noisy that can be. Um, there's almost no sound, it's very low. So uh, I, so far I have, uh, I think this will be my third time using this, I, I think. I, I have no complaints so far, it's, it's working well. So the next thing I have to do is to put the L. Rotary cultures in with the inulin and a little bit of this milk. We're going to whisk that together until we have a smooth slurry. Then we'll add the rest of the milk. It's actually cream. I'm using half and half cream. Um, and then we will fill our jars and get this thing going. So be right back. Okay, so I'm ready to make the slurry. Um, so what I have in here is I have the two tablespoons of inulin. I'm dumping in the probiotic. El Rotary and I have some milk here uh, that has cooled down. I'm gonna, I probably keep saying milk, but it's half and half, just so you know, half milk, half cream. And uh, there it goes. I'm going to, it was probably three tablespoons or so in here. And I'm just going to try to make a smooth paste. When you make the first batch with the tablets, that can be challenging unless you've really made a nice powder. Um, you get a little bit of clumpiness in here, so you do have to stir it a bit. Um, the other thing is, you don't, uh, for, you know, if this is your first time seeing this, you don't use those tablets every time. I used my first set of 10 tablets, I guess about three weeks or so ago when I first started to make the yogurt, and I've been making subsequent batches from that. It should last about 10 generations, but what you do is you take some of this first generation batch and you freeze uh, two tablespoon uh, balls of it, uh, whatever you want to call it. I call them pucks. I put them in a silicone mold, freeze them, and that's what I use for starter. They go dormant in there, so you don't have to worry about killing the El Rotary cultures. The only way you can kill the cultures is if you uh, have too much heat. So that's why the 100 degrees is important, and that's why cooling down the cream like I'm doing is important. I don't want to kill these little cultures before I even start. So there's just some tips for you while I am making this slurry up. Okay, I, I think it looks pretty smooth. So I am going to pour the rest of my liquid in here and I'm going to give it one final stir to make sure that everything is mixed together in here. This clumpiness is, uh, it kept skinning over. So it's just, uh, skin from the cream and now we're going to fill the jars. I really like using a thing with a spout. It does make this easier. I just want to be able to see where that 100 milliliter mark is and go just a little bit above that. Okay. Okay, I have one jar that does not have very much and I have one jar that's pretty full in here, so hopefully I don't kick myself for this later, but here we go, there. They're not all exactly the same. It'll all be good. Yes, I should be putting the lids on them before I throw them in there. Okay, so the yogurt jars are in here. I am going to add some water now. Oh, hopefully making too much of a mess. And my goal is to have the water go up to the level of the yogurt in the jars. I believe uh, that is good. Did get a little on the counter, but that's okay. Okay, so this is in here. We, we're gonna set our temperature and our time. So we're gonna set the temperature and uh, use the plus and minus key to go where you want to go. I want to be at 100, so I'm going to go down with the minus key and then confirm that. Then I'm gonna go over to the time 
and I want 36 hours. So I am going to hold this down until it gets to 36. And then press it one more time to confirm that. And that's it. Then you just let it go. So one thing that I found a little quirky about it um, is that it's, it, it says 36. That's all it says. And the first time I went to use it, I was wondering, well, is it set? Is it working? How do I tell? And I just had to be patient and wait. And uh, an hour later, it, it uh, said 35. <laughs> so it's just going to count down hour by hour at this point. As long as these lights are not flashing, like if they're solid lights, we've got our temperature that we set and we have our time of 36 hours. And if in doubt, you can always come here later and test your temperature if you're paranoid like I was the first time and it was okay. So uh, that reminds me that the water that I poured in was not ice cold. It was um, pretty much just uh, like body temperature water. I, I just, I used sort of lukewarm water from just from the sink. And uh, I, I didn't think it had to be really precise, so it isn't, but um, I wouldn't use ice cold water. Um, so yeah, that's the only other tip I can offer you. Level is up past the yogurt level in the jars. And now we wait 36 hours. We'll, we'll see you guys when these are ready. Uh, you can see what, what we ended up with. Okay, so this thing uh, just powered down to zero. Uh, it's 36 hours later. And uh, the yogurt or fermented dairy product is ready. So I am going to see, see how they look. It's always an exciting moment. Okay, so here's the first one out. There's a tiny little bit of separation at the bottom, like a, an eighth of an inch. Um, and that's kind of, that's to be expected when you're starting with the tablets, which is what we did here today. Uh, so they should all have that. Oh, can hardly even see it in this one. Oh, look at this one. This one's completely different from those few. Very interesting. I will be, I'll probably save this one for the starter on my next few. But you can actually just stir it up and, and eat it like that. It, it doesn't change the taste or texture. It's, it's just that for some reason, it all decided to separate into curds and whey into only one jar. Well, thank you, yogurt. <laughs> um, okay, so we have those. Those need to go into the fridge right away. As far as cleaning the yogurt maker after you're done, it couldn't be easier. This top just gets washed in hot soapy water. Um, I haven't put it in the dishwasher. You can. I would only use the top rack though. Um, you know, it's a light uh, plastic. So I usually just rinse it in soap and water. And then you just dump out the water that's in here and wipe it out. And, and that's it. It couldn't be easier. Before I let you go, I just want to you know, tell you that this is the book that has all the information. I already uh, mentioned, I, I've linked the previous video where I talk more about this, but I really want to encourage people to, if you can't buy it, borrow it from the library. I've had so many questions uh, on YouTube, Facebook, email of this yogurt, and all of them can be answered in here. And, you know, the other thing is there's, there's more than just the yogurt in here. Uh, on page 246, there's a tea that I'm going to make because I went down a rabbit hole over the weekend about mucus lining of your gut. And I looked in here and sure enough, uh, this is all part and parcel of this whole thing of, uh, you know, healing your gut symptoms and making sure that the lining is good, the bacteria in there are good, all those things. And so I'm going to be making that tea as well. And, uh, you know, just working on getting things right, uh, you know, to avoid that indigestion that just keeps plaguing me. Even when I do perfect carnivore, you guys, it's sometimes, you know, it hasn't been enough for me. So 
That's why I'm playing with this stuff. So uh, the link for the book will be below, but borrow it from a friend or a library if you have to. Uh, thanks guys for listening again, and I'm going to put these in the fridge and see you guys on the next video. Uh, hang on, what are my words? I'm Anita. Well, let me just go look and see. I have a super itchy nose.